Thank you. Hello, everyone. We are so thrilled that you are here. There is nothing like starting what we call big school. Have you called it that in your home? Going off to kindergarten, we call that, we've heard of that, the big school, the yellow buses start rolling, the parking lots start filling up, and before long, you are going to have a kindergartner starting at our um, great elementary schools, and we're thankful to have you. Just know, moms and dads, we are excited to have your, your blessings and know that um, it goes quickly. Um, I am a proud mom of a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old in the district, two girls, and um, I feel like it was just a blink of an eye when I was sitting in your shoes, so, so know that. Um, and part of this is a process that we call um, the transition process from preschool to kindergarten. We have another one of these sessions when it's time to go off to intermediate school, which is probably hard for you to even think about. And then we also have the same type session um, when it's time for high school. So know that we have these benchmark moments where we want to come together and give you a little bit to what, of what to look forward to. But one of the greatest things to look forward to is having a, your kindergarten. How many of you, this will be your first child to start in elementary schools? Okay, all right. All right, hands down. How many of you have had another student come through, or have started school as well? Okay, good. So we've got a little balance. So I'll try and speak to both groups. Um, certainly for those of you that are, um, for any of us, sending off our kids to um, school is a, a very exciting time. And um, and we want you to be prepared for that. So we appreciate you being out there and, and being here today to get a little more information. One thing that we, we've talked about in our school district is that um, in Clear Creek ISD, we are launching 21st century learners. We are really preparing students for their future and not our past. One thing that we're all experts in in this room, likely, is a form of education, our own, right? Does everyone have a memory of their kindergarten classroom? Okay. Well, I'm probably older than some of you in here. I realize that now. And um, some of you may have go had, had gone to school in the 80s. Mine, my kindergarten years were a few years before that. How many of you remember kindergarten classrooms where you had the whole group together on the carpet? Does anyone remember a half-day classroom? OK. Does anyone remember, perhaps, um, a whole lot of recess and maybe not a whole lot of um, Study time, does anyone remember a whole lot of recess? Okay, okay. Well, kindergarten has changed a little bit, but a whole lot has stayed the same, and so we want you to know that. You'll find some things very familiar and some things that have, that have shifted a bit. Um, we know that we are starting from the very ground roots of preparing students for some deep thinking, some um, meaningful learning, and um, it start, all starts in kindergarten. So we think we, our, our greatest teachers are those that start with our, as first teachers right behind you, and that's in our kindergarten classrooms. So sitting in rows, sitting at desk, that's not kindergarten. As a matter of fact, our classrooms today are very, very busy. They are full of activity. They're full of a good, what we call a good noise. There's a lot of talking that goes on in there, and we want you to know about that. Um, one, one, of the, uh, one thing that I, we get asked a lot is that I'm not sure if my child's going to be able to be ready for a classroom full of a, a large group of students. Most of our classrooms run in the um, 20 students, uh, in that 20 student range in the state of Texas, 22 to one is the, the limit for class sizes. And so we have full classrooms and there's a lot of learning that takes place in there. Um, likely you'll see one thing that's shifted is that we have a lot, uh, we do have large group time with students. We also have a lot of small group time. As the kindergarten year spins on, we do a lot of assessment of students, individual assessment to know where they are as readers, writers, and mathematicians. And we have small group instruction based on those needs. We have students that come into kindergarten that are already reading. We have some students that come into kindergarten that are just learning their letters, and each are okay. Kindergarten is, is a year where we try to work really hard to know where your student is coming in and match those needs. So that means a lot of differences in, in, um, in groupings and instruction. And there's also a lot of instruction all together so that we can learn from peers. Another piece about our classrooms today is that there's um, perhaps when 
I, I don't know about you in kindergarten, but there's a lot of learning with meaning. There's a lot of real life application to everything that they learn. We're always asking them to make sense of what they're talking about to put it into a problem. Um, when we're talking about counting, we're trying to put counting into context of other things. And so um, there's, a, there's some shifts in that with our students. We also have a lot of um, problem solving. In our math program in kindergarten, I don't know if you remember just the counting and tracing over letter numbers perhaps, um, and counting blocks, although that's important, we use that as a base, but we also move much further. We use um, some number concepts in which those are put into problem solving, and everything comes back to being able to solve that problem. And truly, kindergarten is a place where we take all we have all kinds come into our classrooms, and we really work to meet the needs of each student. And um, our kindergarten teachers are um, truly experts at, at, at studying kids, spending time and, and, and knowing who they are as learners, and spending time building small group instruction for them. So know that that might look a little different than what you had in your kindergarten setting. And yes, we still go to recess. But okay, here's the, here's the tough part. No, we don't take naps, okay? So that, I don't know if you remember uh, kindergarten and taking naps, there are no naps. We have a little downtime, we have a little quiet time, but um, it's a full day of learning, and so we keep them busy, and um, our goal is to have them really tired by the time they come home to you, so that they can um, be rested and, and rest and recharge at home and come back for another great full day of learning. So that's definitely one of our goals. Our classrooms and how they work, just something to be aware of. Um, I don't know, and you may have experienced in reading that we, at a time, we read through what we call basal text, where we had one textbook and everyone read from the same textbook and we all read the same story. Um, Jack and Jill, Jane, all those, those, those pieces. Our classrooms now and our reading instruction is really um, a level-based reading instruction. Each student will be assessed and benchmarked, and our goal is to take them from where they are and push them to the, the highest level of their potential. And so that's what, one of the shifts that we have in our classrooms, as well as in writing. Writing um, in kindergarten for a long time was um, tracing I say, you say, tracing letters, copying text. We really push students in kindergarten to show a picture, try and write words to go with that picture, and to really begin telling that sense of a story. So that's a piece in, in kindergarten as well. Um, so definitely some changes. We have some, uh, a quick little video that we'd like to show you. It happened to be here at Robinson. This is in a first grade classroom, but the idea is to just show what, a, what reading looks like in a, in, in a kindergarten classroom. Like it's hard to get everyone in to, to look at a, a, a classroom at, at this time of the evening, but we've got a quick little video that can give you a, a little snippet of um, that instruction. This happens to be um, what's called our leading edge videos. We have great teachers in our school district and um, our superintendent comes, goes out and um, gets to spend time in the, cl in the classroom highlighting the great work in our, in, our, in our instruction. And so these are located on our website, so if you have a chance and you want to go back and take a look at um, our website, you can find these there. to retell the story after it's all done and what it really means. They're just throwing a thing and then they're like, oh. and then when Mama comes in, they're happy and nice. So they think that. All right, readers, so all week long, we have been working on figuring out tricky words, stopping and thinking about what would make sense, reading parts of a text, and then stopping and thinking about what it was about. Reader's Workshop is underway in Jenny Toop's first grade class. Because when you really know what the author was talking about, you can understand your story better. better. That's right. These Robinson Elementary students are learning more than how to recognize words. And it's a five to 10 minute um, skill lesson that I'm teaching into. So like today it was talking about what your story is really about. And you could see his um little um, his bike seems turning a little red. What does he do next when mom comes in to turn off the light? He acts nice and pleasant. Turn and Talk gives students the chance to try out their new reading skill. They're just throwing a fit and then they're like, oh. 
and that way they can kind of bounce ideas off of each other and sometimes it leads us to the you know the more well-rounded answer than if we were to do it on our own. Back at their desk, they choose books from their personalized reading baskets. And then they saw a snake. Oh my gosh, why did you pick that book? But it's kind of fun, like on the adventure. Students can pick any book as long as it's on their reading level. If they're in books that are too challenging, they give up. It does, they lose their meaning. It doesn't make any sense at all um, because they've stumbled through so many words. Just right books give students just the right amount of work. That's awesome. Good, good thinking. When the timer sounds, buddy reading begins. Like flying and swimming. The bird wants to swim and the, and the fish wants to fly because, see? They really made a lot of connections with each other about stories coming from home or from a book and they were able to relay it to another book. That was very, very powerful. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that has all come to be with respect to making sure that the students were able to make connections and feeling free to, to add those in there? Well, we do, um, we talk a lot when we read. Reading isn't quiet in my room, and that's, um, it was probably very evident, but it's, it's about conversation. We're reading to learn, and then we want to share that. Highlighting her students' hard work is part of the process. And at the end of it, Joshua and Grace were discussing that this book was really about animals who wish they could be like other animals. And that was good thinking. Jenny Toop's goal is to create lifelong readers by using this innovative teaching method. I think ultimately it definitely makes them better thinkers, as you know, I'm better readers, and they have a passion for reading. My kids are very excited about reading, and I think that foremost is the number one goal as a teacher for me teaching reading. Readers Workshop. It doesn't just teach students how to read, it teaches them to love it. Wow. Exciting, isn't it? Or maybe this is what we thrive on. We are so proud of our teachers and what they do in the classroom. The reading workshop model and um, the, the shared readings you can see the thinking throughout that, the support of the teacher, the excitement of the teacher. We want kids to be able to think about what they're reading, to, co to comprehend what they're reading, and to have discussions about it. So that's a little glimpse into what you can be doing this summer, too, when you're reading a book with your, with your child. Talk about it, ask them questions, and certainly have that conversation. It's a major part of our, of our reading instruction program. Okay, well, certainly um, in math, this is the other question. So. We know about reading, but what about math? Math has shifted a little bit from our days of just counting. Um, perhaps you are already practicing with your children, um, counting just out loud, one to, one to 20, perhaps singing a song up into 100. In, um, in kindergarten, we've gone away uh, quite a bit from worksheets and just doing the problems on worksheets. There, are, there is some of that, but a lot of it is manipulating, working with objects, and problem solving there and, and demonstrating that thinking. Um, with our, our uh, math curriculum, we will be having a new math adoption next year and we'll be working with um, our teachers and our students to really bring home and show you what that looks like as far as activities that you can do at home to support them as well. But by the end of kindergarten, your students will be making um, certainly uh, combinations to 10 to 20, counting on and problem solving quite a bit throughout the year. In um, reading, we we showed you a little bit of the reading text that they were doing. We get to what we call a level D is our expectation at the end of kindergarten for reading. Um, and that's just the, the, the expectation. We can go far beyond that and we can work with those that are, are still struggling to get there, but that's our goal. And that is like a two, um, a two line or three line text with some supportive pictures in that book. So just kind of want to give you that. We also have a, a video real quick. This is a third grade. Um, video that shows you a little bit of our math program at, at an upper level, but you can see um, what, we're, what we're growing towards in, in kindergarten. So we want to take a look. This happens to be at Green Elementary. Is anyone here from Green Elementary? Okay, good, 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 good. Well, you came just to, you, you, you went to Green Elementary. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's see if this looks like the instruction you had back then. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. We'll give it a test. Show me 
your thumb if you can tell me how many plants I'm going to need all together. Georgina Allen and her students are tackling third grade math. Okay, let's work with these, these three answers right here. So, who can show me their thumb if they'd like to share their thinking? And then I plus 15 to the 45. And it, and it gave me 60. Circle time is okay, strategy one. central. I wonder if there's a multiplication sentence that we could write. Number talk, turn and talk, yield more possibilities. And that's just to get their minds ready for, it usually has to do with something with what we're going to do today. So I brought in some geometry with doing the perimeter around the edge of a square, but also some multiplication, and they're adding those big numbers. At Green Elementary, math is all about learning different ways to solve the same problem. Students use number lines, build arrays, and more to find the right answer. I have six groups of four now. So there's six chairs. So Georgina six Allen's chairs. hope is that her students will see the connections in what they've learned all week and apply it to other math problems. You've created a love for math <laughs> and that is not the easiest thing to do. But asking several questions, do you like math? They looked at me with their eyes beaming. Yes, I really like this. This is fun. And I think it's those, those hands-on activities. You know, they really do need those models and manipulatives in order for it to, to understand things when they get older and on just the paper and pencil. But you have to start with the manipulatives before they can understand an equation written down on the paper. Lesson plans include small group work and stations. I'm going to give you 18 cubes and it's your job to break them apart. It allows the teacher to analyze the areas students need more help as well as help them develop excellent number sense. Understanding the math. I mean, if you see three times two, these students understand that it's three groups of two. It's not just six. They can see in their mind, okay, I've got three groups and there's two in each. It's understanding what the number means mm -hmm. and being able to break it apart. Okay, so how many wheels uh, do you need so far? Uh, I need 31. 31? How do you know that? Because I know 20 plus 2 equals 30 uh -huh. and 30 plus 1 equals 31. Okay, good. For parents who may not understand the new math, Ms. Allen suggests consulting with an expert. Ask them to show you what they're doing because they're very good teachers. You, I mean, I have partners working together in here. They teach each other and they can let their parents know why we're using cubes. Every child, she says, can be successful in math when allowed to choose the strategy that works best for them. The end result? A generation of prime problem solvers. Awesome. You're doing a great job with that. It's nice to get a glimpse into those classrooms a little bit further down the line. One of the, the, the main pieces that we want to show you from this is that it is beyond just computation and adding. It is, we're moving much more towards that problem solving and understanding how math works. So you'll hear more about this from your teachers as you, as you enroll. But we, um, we're excited and we, and we have a great program in store for you and your students. We have a few questions that come up with our first time um, students in, in Clear Creek and all about kindergarten. So this might be a part that you really want to tune in for and you may have some of these very same questions. We took the top questions that we get asked in the front offices and in our, in our offices all the time and these are, are a few of those so I want to cover what I can. First question is what is dress code for kindergarten? Have you, has your student already asked you that yet? You're, no? Okay. All of our students, um, we have free dress certainly for students. It's important, a couple of things, mom and dad, for you to think about the summer preparing for the school year. We want shoes that we can take on and off and control ourselves. So if we're working on tying laces, it's time to really work on tying laces this summer if we're going to send them off to school with those. If not, it might be a Velcro option for you. As far as clothes, this is a time for kindergarten for um, some transition 
from being maybe a little dependent on you for help for some things because we as parents like to help a little bit. It's time to start transitioning over the summer to the fall to clothes that um, we can have easy access on and on even in and out of those restrooms because mom and dads are not going in the restrooms and helping them up and down with those clothing items. So we may look really cute but make sure they're functional. Um, we do have PE and recess um, almost every day of the week. So um, please know that they're going to be um, moving about. So make sure if you're looking for shoes this summer that you're looking for shoes that they can do those activities in. Um, and your schools will tell you a little bit more about that. All of our schools are free dress. We do have a standardized dress code at Clear Lake City Elementary is our one that has um, a standardized dress code. Um, our school hours, you may have already seen um, our schools operating, but 8.15 to 3.15 are our are, are operating times. Most of our schools open up for breakfast around 7.45. We do offer breakfast um, uh, for a fee and also some um, on, uh, on a, a sliding scales for, the, for those who qualify. But um, I would highly encourage you to have your students coming in the door by 8 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes, if you've ever been around an elementary school at dismissal or arrival times, there are two times where the traffic is really rough, and it's those times. So plan accordingly. Um, but we're tardy by 8.15, and by 3.15 is when we start that dismissal and start um, that, that taking off. And we, in the middle of the day, we do get a 30-minute lunch. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Another top question that we hear is, can I visit the classrooms and because it's really, yeah, one of the most difficult things is to send them off to kindergarten and not know what happens throughout a day. We do provide opportunities for, ki for our parents to come up into our classrooms to volunteer and to help out. We also, though, ask, especially in kindergarten, that we start that transition process. I don't want to say detachment, but I would just guess that release process of parents releasing a little bit away and sending their kids on into the classroom so that they can become a little more independent themselves. So we do ask that um, if you want to visit a classroom that you contact the front office, schedule it with, a, with the front office and the principal. Usually we'll stay, um, if there's a lesson to be observed, 45 minutes is about the time frame that we observe. It's about what we as administrators go into a classroom to observe, just so that the instruction can continue in the classroom for all, all the learners. We also get the question of how does lunch work? So we have the lunch room, um, the lunch line open um, back here for you to take a look at. But we have a lunch system in which you can actually pay for your lunches online and pay ahead and you have an account. Uh, Ms. Polson mentioned that you have, will have a, a, a account number. Your student is going to learn a very long number and that number is going to stay with them from kindergarten all the way through high school. So it's going to be a very important, we call it a PIN number, a personal information number. So that will be a number that they will be able to access their account and pay for their lunch or they can bring their, their, their money um, e each day. In kindergarten, we would ask that you think about um, paying ahead um, the money in a, in a larger amount if possible. I don't know about you, but coins or dollars in a kindergartner's pocket sometimes doesn't always make it to the destination that we hope it to. So um, we'd ask you to, anytime you could drop off money and, or send money to, to the, um, in, through the office and to the cafeteria and, and definitely take care of that account. But the kids do get a 30 minute lunch each day that is with their classmates, just sitting just like you are right now at a, at, a, at a lunch table. This is our cafetorium, so this is our gym and our, uh, and our cafeteria area here. So they will come in and sit with their class. Um, the teacher does go off, and that's their 30 minute of free time, of, of, of lunch time for the, for the teachers as well. But we do have monitors and administrators in the, in the, in the lunchroom throughout the course of the day. So, so know that that's how that works. And of course, you can bring your, your lunch. Just know that we also have um, a, a growing case of food allergies. If your student is one of those, or if you could just be mindful that that is a growing um, a population in our schools. So we ask that you be informed about um, those food allergies and pack accordingly. Okay. 
and right into allergies. If your child does have allergies, and truly a growing, um, a, a growing concern for a lot of parents, we have school nurses on each um, campus, and our school nurses work very t closely with our cafeterias and our um, administrative staff to make sure that we're informed. If you have any information from your doctors, please make sure that the nurse is informed as well as your classroom teacher. Um, we wanna know way ahead of time um, as close to school start, before school starting, the, the better, so that we can make sure we have a safe environment for your child. And then we always get this question too about do our, kid, do our kindergartners get grades on their report card? Kindergarten is a developmental time, so we recognize that, and our grade, grading system re, um, represents that. We do not necessarily give um, in kindergarten, you won't see a hundred, you won't see a anything a 70, a 80. We have um, some different grading systems in, in the classrooms. The report card will show their progress on a continuum. And so know that when you get that report card and your kindergarten teachers will be sharing that with you, just know that that's going to be coming your way. And then, I know this is some of the, our, the older siblings and the younger siblings ask this too, even as much as the parents. Do kindergartners have homework? The answer is, Yes, 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 they do. We do have homework in kindergarten. Homework may not look what, like what you remember homework to be. Homework in kindergarten is always going to be reading with your child every night or having your child read to them, to you. It will be working with words, um, working with writing perhaps, um, practicing their writing. It will be counting, problem solving. Those are the types of, of homework that you will have in kindergarten. Now. This shouldn't cause you too much alarm. This is probably what you've already been doing as you're the great first parents at home that you've already, uh, uh, teaching that you've been doing at home. So, um, but that will be reiterated in, in kindergarten. And then typically we'll have a take home reading system where we have a take home reader that comes home and that you're going to be f keeping a log and sending that book back. Something that you can do this summer to get prepared is to find a space, find a, pro, a, a, a point in your home where you can designate as that's the place where we start putting all of our things and start those systems. Our kindergarten students and all of our students truly, they thrive on structures, systems, and consistency. If you haven't had a child go to school yet, I would say it's time, and you can say even Ms. Hughes said, that it's time to start building that process into your, into your daily system at home. We want them to know what to expect and know what that day looks like. Your, day, your mornings will be much smoother and their school day will be much smoother when they have those um, routines in place. Okay, let's take a look. A great question. How can I volunteer on campus? I'm new to kindergarten. I'm new to public education. I'm new to Clear Creek and I want to get involved. Boy, do we have great ways for you to get involved. All of our campuses have strong PTAs. Our PTA tables over there are some of our PTA councils, folks over there from um, our council. We're so thankful for them. Our parents make our schools a great place to be. They are um, help, helping out in our classrooms and our schools day in and day out. I, I, we couldn't do it without them. So please, we'd ask you to plug in and get involved early. We have a lot of opportunities for you. So yes, we have volunteer opportunities for you. And then how does bus transportation work? A lot of questions come about, about um, how, do, how do I know what bus or if I qualify for um, transportation? How many of you have found our website, clearcreekisd.net? Have we found that? Okay. There is something on there that's called um, a, BOS, a, a trans finder, and, and you can plug in your address, and it will sh share with you where, um, your, where your bus service uh, may, may lie. Also, at each of our campuses, we'll have bus maps and, and bus information at the, at the front of the school and to let you know if, where the bus routes travel and about where the bus pickup times um, will be. Transportation and routines, I can't say it enough for kindergarten students, is imperative. There is a moment where we um, dismiss out of some of our schools between anywhere between 500 up to almost 1,000 students within a 15 to 30 minute time period. We want our kindergarten students to know exactly where they're going every day and make sure we get them on the right path each day. Now, how many of you have your kids involved in multiple activities? Anyone have um, dance or scouts or karate or daycare or 
things of that going on. Okay. One thing that you can help us out with is coming up with that consistency after school and communicating with your teacher. When we have dance one day and, de and maybe um, daycare one day and Girl Scouts another, it's, it, it's, it's a, every day is a different process. One thing we want to do is make sure we get that real communicated to the classroom teacher and make sure we have that structure and system in place. So the first day of um, even before you bring your child into school, we'll be asking about what those transportation plans are and um, we'll help you with that along the way. I, this is another great question. What does the curricul kindergarten curriculum look like? You can access our year at a glance on, on our website under the parent page and curriculum, but you've gotten a little a preview to that today and we've got some folks here who can talk to you a little bit more about that. Every day our students spend time reading, writing, problem solving, and learning to be a strong community of learners. In kindergarten, we work, as much as we stress the academics, we also stress learning to be respectful and have great character in a community and working with others. Because some, some of our, um, our, before we can learn, we've got to learn how to, to learn it and control ourselves in, in, a, in, a, in a group, and that's equally important. So we spend time on, on behavior and social skills as well. And then what about if my child is already reading? I've already had some parents talk, touch base with me today. My child is already reading. What does that look like in kindergarten? We do have strong readers coming into kindergarten, and we also have strong readers who are struggling, who have, or kids who have not started reading yet, and that's okay. We take both. Um, with the reading, if they're already reading, we'll definitely be doing an assessment for your, each child, and we'll be working with getting them in a reading level and a reading group and at, at the level in which they need to be challenged. And your school, uh, most of our schools have what we call a literacy coach, someone who focuses just on helping teachers with literacy, and they will be working um, with meeting your child's needs with that classroom teacher. And then what can I do to prepare my child for kindergarten? Have you ever searched that on Google? If I think if you search that on Google, you will find a million answers. But here are some of the things that we know that we would, and our kindergarten teachers would like for you to know that we would like for you to practice. Please practice writing their name, holding a pencil or a crayon. Those are, that's a, a big piece of starting off the school year is just that practicing that name. Start it big in the sand, in the dirt. Start it with chalk, with paper, with... Um, uh, chalk with highlighters, but practice writing that name. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just getting that motion to those letters down. Also, more than, even more than that, we want you to read to them often. The research shows us that the more that our students are, and our, our earliest learners are exposed to reading by their parents and at home, outside of the school set, setting, their um, academic progress is greatly impacted. So we want you reading with them often. Doesn't matter what you sound like, doesn't matter what the book is, but we want you reading with them and, um, and, and, and sharing in that conversation. Um, talk about what happened in the story, whether they liked it or not. If you can give them some of your favorite books or, or, or have their favorite books of their own, that will foster their independence as well. Visit the library. We have great library summer programs that are taking place in all of our local communities. We'd love for you to be in touch with those as well. Practice putting puzzles together. The, uh, the motor ability, to be able to find motor ability, to be able to work a puzzle may not be something that you've been doing at your home lately, but it's a, a great fine motor skill for our students coming into kinder. And practice counting aloud. Practice counting aloud from 1 to 20, 1 to 25. Um, it's also important for them to practice matching objects with those numbers. So that's something that is important to do. Some of you, if you take your children to the grocery store, have them help you count the items in the basket or on the shelf, and giving them real world examples would be a great asset. Once again, from the, from the beans to the pennies to the Legos, multiple different objects and multiple different ways of counting. And here's the fun one. Uh, every kindergarten teacher would like for me to ask you to go ahead and within your supervision, allow them to have, hold scissors. <laughs> you can have them try and cut Play-Doh. You can have them try and cut um, s small objects or soft objects. But just the control of paper and scissors, we will help them a lot. But if you want to... Uh, 
under your supervision, not without you, but under your supervision, have them practice cutting would be great. Also, um, our kindergarten is, moves really quickly. Um, if they're not, not recognizing letters yet, practice with them, practicing, uh, recognizing their letters and the sounds that those letters make and identifying them um, is a, a great piece as well. Sorting objects. Wow, we've had a change in our math curriculum this upcoming year. We're in kindergarten for a long time. We did a lot of sorting and patterning. Sorting and patterning has now moved off the map in kindergarten, and we're expect they're almost expecting it in the state of Texas for it to be done at home. So um, we have new curriculum coming in, in in math that's pushing beyond that. So a great thing this summer is to sort and to try and come up with patterns. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, red, blue, blue, red. Just to try those different patterns out. It's a great piece to try at home. And then also set, recognizing those simple sight words. Very simple. Those that, the I, the A, the and, the the, those are those basic sight words will be a great um, asset for them and to find them in a book. I know as a parent, these are the things that I found out of all most important to read, read, read with them. Two of my favorite books with my kids back in their day, I guess, a few years ago, was Wimberly Worried. Starting off for kindergarten can be a stressful time for your kid. This is a great book that helps talk about that transition, that it's gonna be okay when they transition away from mom and dad, that mom and dad are gonna come back and um, they're going to be able to see them at the end of the day and that school really is a great place to be and how to address the worrying. Also, the night before kindergarten gets them prepared in a nice way for that first start to kindergarten. One thing, another thing to help us out is to know their name, their address, and where they live, and their phone number. It's not, it's not too early. Um, sing a song, practice saying it, practice um, repeating it after each other. But it's an important thing that, um, that, that, that will help them start off their kindergarten year. Begin those bedtime and um, morning routines, those structures that we talked about. Yes, it's okay to go sit them to bed early, and it's, and it's important for them to start off their day with um, a good meal and a, and, a, and a great start to day. We have kindergartners come home the first weeks of school very, very um, spent because we work with them in uh, many ways. And so um, they are excited, but they're also tired. So those structures and getting them to bed to early will be important. And reinforcing those self-help skills. I can't um, say this enough. Um, sometimes our moms are um, maybe a little more, have a little more tendency than our dads on this sometimes, but it's time for us to start having kids go to the restroom themselves, take care of themselves, make sure that they take care of all their items themselves. Even at the lunch and, the, and at breakfast, opening up their um, milk or opening up their juice and putting the straw in. I know as parents sometimes we think it's a lot faster if we just do it for them, we do it for them, we do it for them. Just know that this is the time, this is the summer to start pushing them to have those opportunities to, ha to be able to do that and help themselves. Um, I think sometimes we, we try and get in a hurry and, we, and for the sake of time we just want to help them and get it done. But if you could with for anything from pants to skirts to shoes and laces to getting ready for those, um, those meals at mealtime, that, that will be a, a great help for them as well. And then this is what a day looks like in kindergarten. It's busy. We start off with a morning meeting, everyone on the carpet, usually talking about the great things about the day. There's a little bit of word study, talking about words, a, lot about, a little bit about writing. There's always a reading lesson in there. And then there's also typically a, a writing activity where the whole group is helping build a class story and, and doing some writing together. There's lunch, there's a little bit of recess, we have workstations in the classroom. Know that this year, each of our elementary classroom, our kindergarten classrooms will be having iPads in the classroom as part of their stations too. We'll have at least five iPads in every um, kindergarten classroom as we um, go into the school year. Uh, and that's gonna be an exciting piece that we're adding as well as the computers in the classroom um, to the rest of our stations that we have. But then there's math and then we have a thing called block. In elementary school, we call it block time. This is when 
you can conference with your, you can create a conference time for your teacher. If you have a, want to have a meeting with a teacher, you can schedule that. But the block time, our, te our, our students have art once a week. They have PE twice a week and, uh, and music. And some of the schedules rotate um, a little differently per, um, per school and depending on the enrollment. But your, ki your students every week will come home and have art class with an art teacher. They will have PE, like in here, with our PE coaches, and, um, and music as well. So those are times in which the kids will leave their classroom teacher and be with those special teachers. And then also the um, teachers are available for if, if, to meet with you or to answer questions at that time. We also have, in almost all of our kindergarten classrooms, there is a snack time, and your teachers will be telling you about how to pack that snack and what's, what's a good snack to bring. I don't think it's Cheetos or fiery Cheetos or anything like that. Nothing orange or crumbly. I don't think they're going to want that, but healthy snacks for sure. We have a lot of great things that happen, are happening in our classrooms, and we have some of the tables represented here. And I know you probably have a lot of questions and have sat in these stools far, far long enough, so it's time to get up and move. But um, some of the things that we have more information at the tables for you are, um, are those, art, those block classes that we talk about, that block time. And that's art, music, and PE. They're tables that are represented in the back, as well as our child nutrition. We want to invite you to take a look at our um, cafeteria line in the back and take a look at that. We have our PTA is here to help you talk about how to get involved in your school as well as early education. We have programs for pre-K three-year-olds and pre-K four-year-olds, and they're here as well. Our libraries, our libraries are an important part of our schools. Um, your child will be checking out library books, and um, our librarians are here to talk to you as well, as well as special education services, and I know everyone was drawn to our technology over there as well. Um, and don't forget that this may be your one and only chance, depending on if you're a bus rider or not, to take a look at the big yellow bus. And that's a huge highlight about kindergarten. So we have a lot of folks that are here to help answer some specific questions if you have them. Um, know that um, this is the beginning of a great path and a great connection with our school district. And we are so thankful that you've chosen to have your child attend Clear Creek ISD, and it's going to be a great 12 years with you, and we look forward to that. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help you, please always speak up. There, um, people are willing to help, um, but communication is our, our greatest asset, so please make sure that um, you ask questions and we can answer them to, um, to make your transition a great one. 